Hello, and thank you very much for inviting me uh, to speak at uh, this event. I'm very glad uh, to say a few words about how to prevent the zoonotic disease emergence from a livestock and food, secu food security perspective, but also the constraints to implement as a sol this solution. Um, I'm working for the International Livestock Research Institute, INRI, part of the CGIR systems. So uh, we work across the developing world and livestock uh, for improving the life of farmers in low and middle income country, because livestock is actually uh, involving over 1 billion people around the world who depend directly or indirectly on farm animals. Uh, the demand of animal source food, including meat, meal, and egg, is increasing in this developing world. Uh, because if you look at the data, you know, American people consume more than 100 kilograms of meat per year, whereas in Africa, here in Nigeria, for example, they eat uh, just 7 kilograms uh, of meat per year. So the need are there in the coming years, and it's already happening already, and that contribute to the challenge of how to manage infectious diseases emergence in our world. Uh, another challenge is about animal health. Uh, African countries suffer a huge burden of livestock diseases, and that lead to the loss of around one in five animals, including a zoonotic diseases we are talking about. And finally, in the context of the pandemic, uh, uh, but also from a cultural perspective, the consumption of bushmeat and wildlife farming in some of the areas around our globe are challenging uh, for managing a zoonotic uh, disease emergence and re-emergence. So in this context, what can we do? Uh, and here I, I want to highlight a few experience from INRI works and uh, our partners uh, on, on how to control and prevent the emergence of uh, zoonotic diseases uh, from a livestock and food security perspective. So I think that, you know, um, uh, we need to continue improving the disease surveillance uh, from a One Health perspective. So developing a tools and a solution for better management of diseases. And this is an adaptation measure if we put it in the context of COP27 since they enable farmers to keep animals uh, under difficult conditions and uh, to prevent uh, the diseases. As a second point I want to make is about, we need to work more on biosecurity at the farm level. But unfortunately, this is very challenging in low and middle income country because the biosecurity investment, uh, uh, you know, require farmers to invest themselves. And very often farmers don't have means uh, uh, to do so. So we need to think about solution, how to help them, for example, from the public-private partnership solution, for example. Uh, the, the management of herd health and disease control measure in general will help also. So really bringing the vet services and the uh, innovation to work at the farm level to improve herd health. Uh, the, another area is important for zoonotic diseases it's about hygiene practices in different levels along the value chain of uh, livestock production. For example, from the farm, I talked about that before, but also at the slaughterhouse and the wet market, traditional market, where you have live animals are sown and slaughtered, but also where the infrastructure and the hygiene are not good, and that creates a condition that uh, you know facilitates the transmission and emissions of uh, zoonotic diseases. Uh, the bush meat consumption and wildlife farming I mentioned earlier, we need more education and behavior change to manage uh, this system. We cannot ban it, but we will accompany people to practice better to reduce the risk or to avoid the risk. And on this thing, it fall under the umbrella of One Health approach. We need to strengthen the capacity of One Health at different levels, in particular at the country levels, to change the policy, to attract more investment, but also to strengthen the capacity of uh, people who are practicing one health at the crowd level, including 
public health people, animal health workers, and farmers. And this is very important. And that goes for the investment uh, into One Health uh, uh, to improve uh, all this practice to prevent the emissions of zoonotic disease. So thank you very much for the attention.